we're excited to be able to host. I mean, one of the big reasons uh, our administration built this facility was for weekends like this. And we have an unbelievable fan base, um, a beautiful ballpark, and we have three other great teams here for the weekend. It should be an exciting weekend of baseball, and uh, we're ready to roll. Again, questions for Jake and Jared. Again, Ryan over here has got the microphone. Raise your hand, and, and if you would, address uh, the student athlete that you want to answer the question. We'll start here with Steve in the middle. Jared, uh, this time last year, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you'd have made the travel roster, and I hear you are on the dais before the NCAA tournament. What has what the last year meant to you? Uh, yeah, so coming back this year, I know I've, I've said a lot that I wanted to come back and kind of prove – prove myself to everyone here, to myself, um, and I feel like I've, I've partially done that, but I think um, the postseason is is the real season. It's it's the biggest part of the year. I feel like proving yourself really can't be truly done until you do something in the postseason. So um, from last year, knowing that I probably wasn't going to be a big part of it, to this year, hoping that I play a big role in our success, it's been a big difference and uh, something I'm very happy about. Let's go ahead and get it here to Ben here in the front. To either of you guys, obviously there's you know NCAA tournament ba banners and things like that out on the outfield now with the tournament being hosted here. W what's the feeling of like walking out to Duty Noble and kind of knowing that the postseason's finally here? <coughs> it's it's awesome. I mean, obviously this is my first uh, experience of hosting. Jake's experienced it before, but um, you know I feel like it's something that the fans deserve, that this place deserves, with how much they support our team and college baseball in general, um, I think it's going to be an awesome weekend. Yeah, I couldn't say any better myself. Um, the fans deserve it. We built this stadium for this reason, and uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to shine this weekend. I think people are going to show up, people are going to be loud, and it's going to be Mississippi State baseball for three days. Okay, we'll get it back to Steve here. Jake, uh, for some of these teams, this is their first NCAA regional experience, but it's, it's your fourth. How does that experience you feel like help you kind of prepare for this? It helps, you know. Um, it, I just said when we walked in this room, it kind of gives you flashbacks to 2016. This is the first time I've had a press conference in here since we got put out by Arizona in a super regional at home. Um, you know, kind of taking practice today, it kind of had the same feel as it did in Southern Miss two years ago, the same feel it did in Tallahassee a year ago. It's different, you know. Um, they take away, you know, the scoreboard's completely different. It's all NCAA. The, like you said, the banners, all that's NCAA. So uh, it, it, it has that postseason feel to it, um, you know, and, and it's something all we got to do is go out and play our baseball, and it's going to be a good weekend for us. We'll go to Joel here, second row in the middle. Jake, last year you guys in Tallahassee, y'all were kind of, I don't want to say you didn't have anything to lose, but you were kind of the underdogs a little bit and things, you know, coming into this year national seed kind of thing. Just is the pressure different? I mean, do you, do you feel any differently about it? Like how do you think this club will handle not being a team that, you know, doesn't have anything to lose, you know, being, being a national seed? I mean, it's not really pressure, you know. I mean, we get to come out and play baseball tomorrow. I get to put on the uniform again tomorrow. Uh, Jerry gets to go out and pitch tomorrow. You know, it's, it's the same thing. Um, it's the same thing we've done all year, but it's, uh, it's just something we just got to come out and do that we always do. And, and that's really what we're kind of, you know, relying on is that this is what we do every day and this is what we came to college for. Um, you know, you, you come to Mississippi State for the big stage, you know, for postseason baseball. You don't come here to, you know, to not make it to Hoover, to play in Hoover and be done. You, you come here to play postseason baseball and, and for that chance to get to Omaha. Last year was a, it, it, you can't really compare anything to last year. Last year's over. Last year was a very, very crazy ride. Um, this year's going a lot smoother and we plan to keep it that way. Go ahead, Ben, in the front. Jake, I know I asked you this the other day, but Jared, you know, with this being seniors and being able to play at home for a regional, for obviously you've got to get do this weekend first, but a super <coughs> regional potentially down the road too. What does that mean to be able to have a couple more weekends at Duty Noble? Oh, it's very special. Um, you know, senior day, um, I think I was able to kind of keep myself together, knowing kind of in the back of my head that we were probably going to be able to play a couple more games here. Um, so knowing that I have a little bit longer to be able to soak in the atmosphere, all the fans, and just being able to be with my teammates at our home, is, uh, it's very special. 
Again, questions for the uh, student athletes. We'll get the microphone to you. Anybody else have any questions before we let the players go? All right, we'll let the fellas. Thank you guys for having us, Hell State. Thank you. We'll go ahead and uh, take questions for the coaches here on the dais again. Like the student athletes, please address which coach you'd like to answer the question. We'll start with Steve. Coach, uh, pitch and plans for tomorrow. That didn't last long. <laughs> We're going to throw JT again tomorrow. <clears throat> so JT will pitch uh, the noon game tomorrow against Southern. Go ahead, Steve. How would you assess uh, Elijah McNamee's progress at this point? He's had a really good week. I mean, um, he's been swinging since Sunday, running around, ran at full speed today. So he's really close. Um, I think he's got a shot to play tomorrow. I don't know in what capacity. DH, right field, there's still some pieces that uh, need to see him play in a real game and, and move around. But um, better than expected, I could say that. We'll go to Brett here to coach his right on the second row. Do you know who you'll go to in game two? Yeah, it'll be Ethan Small. OK. And as you, as you kind of get into this, what, what about your lineup has kind of, uh, we'll put it this way, what, what is your lineup prioritized over the last day or two of practice after struggling with runners on in, in Hoover? Has there been a rededication <laughs> to a specific approach? No. no we're, we're the same team. We got great hitters. We have hit all year. We're one of the top offenses probably in the country. And, um, and we played a funky 17-inning game. And then we locked in with a really good pitcher in the Vanderbilt game. Yeah, and the last game got, got away from us, you know, played from behind. But uh, I like where we're at. Like, I, I have a lot of trust in our players. And we just got really good players, veteran players that have played in this. Uh, I look forward to seeing them play this week. We'll go ahead and get it to, the ben, uh, to ben here in the front to coach's left. Coach, you mentioned those veteran players. Obviously, you got kind of a small senior class, but one that plays a big role. I mean, how much can you lean on those guys in a sort of the postseason? You know, as, as a coach to this point, man, you, you let loose of the reins, and, and it's a player driven. The teams that get to Omaha and the teams that play great in the postseason, uh, they're player driven. And we've really been player driven since the day I showed up on campus. Um, we have a great culture inside our clubhouse and a um, huge expectation of what they want to achieve. And, and so um, I've been a part of that, but, but we have, like you said, great leadership, great seniors, guys that have been there and done it so many times um, with their backs to the wall even. I mean, they've just, they've just performed over and over. We'll stay on the front with Logan. Chris, uh, as you've been able to study Southern a little bit more over the last several days, just what impresses you the most about their lineup? It is uh, – Top to bottom, almost everybody hits, and they put a lot of pressure on you. So you're going to have to defend the steal, defend the bunt, um, play good defense, <clears throat> and pound the strike zone against them. Again, questions for the coaches. We'll go back to Steve. Uh, Kyle Southern runs the bases exceptionally well. How do you kind of scheme for that and kind of prepare your catchers for the Southern running game? I think you just talk about it. Make sure they're aware that, you know, they got guys from top to bottom that are going to run, whether they're on first or second or even have a first and third situation. Just preparing them, knowing that, hey, you know, you're going to have to be able to be ready to go from pitch one to the last and get in good position, ready that you think they're going to steal at any time. We'll go ahead to Robbie to the coach's left. Coach Cheese, we saw Dustin the other day, 17 innings, pretty remarkable to catch as, as long as he did in that game. But for Luke to come out and do what he did as a freshman the next night and give you a solid backstop there, how well do you feel about those those catchers at this point? I feel great. I mean, Luke, <laughs> you know, if you watch this lately, Luke's had a couple opportunities to get in there and catch. He's done a really good job. I mean, like I said, I think him catching Ethan Small and whoever, he, he's caught JT again his entire life. So those guys have done great. They prepare just like they're going to catch every single day. I know Dustin had a 17 inning game there where we just felt like it, you know, we could we could give him a break and come back and catch that next game if we needed to or he could if he wanted to. But, um, you know, I think Hancock's been doing excellent behind the plate, and so we give him the opportunity. He did well. Just to go on record, I wanted Dustin to catch the next day, but <laughs> I got overruled. So <laughs> Dustin couldn't walk, so that, that made my decision. We'll go ahead and get it to Danny to the back right of the coaches. Chris, uh, Keegan James has been, had some ups and downs during the year, but he really gave you a good outing last week in Hoover. Just talk about his importance to the bullpen and what – what guys like that mean to you as you go through a tournament atmosphere? Well, well you know, Keegan has so much experience. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he, all our bullpen, some of them older guys, uh, we really need them. I mean, you need them 
um, all the way through the process, the depth of your pitching in this, unless you just dominate one, two, three, is, is the depth of pitching in tournament play is huge. We saw it last week, and Keegan gave us a great outing last week, gave us a good one the week before, um, and, and we're looking forward to it. He has great stuff, and he's a veteran guy. He's, if I'm not mistaken, he was on the mound there at the end of the Super Regional last year, and so uh, not many kids can say that. So those are some of the senior guys that we're really looking to lean on. We'll get it to Tyler here to the front. Staying with the bullpen, you talk about senior guys, but you also have some younger arms there who, who might uh, make an impact this weekend, one of them being Eric Sarantola. Do you think that he, um, he might come out and pitch a few innings this week, and, and what has he meant to your bullpen as he starts to come back and, and get back into a rhythm? He, he's been really good the last couple of weeks. He's on our roster this weekend. I expect to use him. I mean, it's power stuff, and he, um, he's got a lot of confidence right now. He has a chance to be a difference maker in one of these games got time for a couple more for the coaches we'll go back to Ben sticking with pitching with Peyton <coughs> starting a game in Hoover how much have you guys gotten work with him just to keep him fresh over the week he actually pinned today so you know getting him out there in the in Hoover was good to get him out there in a the, uh, situation this time of the year sometimes it's good to get a little rest so I think he'll be available later in the weekend but he's uh, his pin was today and uh, feeling good so we'll have him you know available we'll go to Tyler and then Tom and then Joel and that'll be it Going back to Elijah for one more, is it more so how he feels, or is it if he's cleared, you know, he's, he's pretty much full go? No, it'll be how he feels, and um, it'll be a little precautionary too. I mean, uh, the players at this time of year, they're all going to tell you they're ready to play, ready to go. Um, and you got to get somebody, you know, somebody who hadn't played in two weeks needs, you know, I don't know about throwing them out there full speed right out, right out the shoot, especially in this type of competition. Go ahead, Tom, in the back. Coach, obviously a lot of the guys on the roster have – postseason experience but from your perspective what does experience mean like what are some of the things that that can apply to postseason play that can give maybe an advantage over others that haven't experienced it I just think it's it's the ability to play free you know some of our guys have been there done it um, I, we spoke in the locker room a little bit earlier you know usually in any postseason run you fall behind you know there's games that you have to fight back and you have to you can't lose you know lose your cool I guess you could say in those moments and you know, th that group in there laughed because they really had to fight back last year. And so knowing that it's not over until the last out and, um, you know, handling the environment piece. You know, for us, it feels like postseason baseball a lot of weekends when you just play here. I mean, when you play LSU at home, when you play Auburn at home, when you play Georgia at home, that feels like postseason. So that's where I think the advantage comes for us is being able to handle the atmosphere. And we'll wrap it up with Joel here in the middle. Coach Westy, Westy and Jake have both kind of been struggling a little bit the last several weeks and things. Uh, just what have you seen from them this week? And, and has this, in your opinion, I guess been a, a good time for them to have that mental break over the course of the last week to not have a game to worry about, kind of get their swings straightened well, up? It, that's how the game goes. I mean, it's always, I always got somebody who's hitting really good in the lineup, and I usually have somebody who's struggling a little bit. And uh, that's where the depth of our lineup has helped us. But we took, we took Saturday and Sunday off, and I told the guys don't hit, don't do, even though I think Jake hit. Um, but we've had a long week. I mean, we didn't have a midweek. We, we've been here. We usually don't practice on Monday. So we've put a, a lot of time into hitting mechanics and just feeling good and, and doing some fun things there. And, and they've both been really good. They're great players. So they just, you know, the games, you know, it has its highs and lows, and how we handle it is the key. But um, I expect those two guys to come out and, and be in the moment. Thank you, coaches. We'll see you uh, guys tomorrow. Can I, can I say one more thing? Do of you course, mind? absolutely. You know, we, we, across the country, we're bringing out our, our volunteer assistants. So as you see them get interviewed this weekend, uh, just trying to make that position more visible across the country because, you know, I guess everybody knows we lost the third assistant vote in baseball. And um, hopefully as the weekends go on, <clears throat> our volunteer assistants, um, Cheese right here works probably as many hours as I do and stresses as much as I do. Um, and these positions, you know, man, we really feel like they're important positions. And the player-to-coach ratio uh, should be equal to other, the other sports. And so as you see this weekend go across, that's why I brought Cheese today, even though he knows our, our players. And he'll tell you he coaches more hours than I do and probably stresses more than I do. But we've been together a long time. But as you see, you know, our volunteer coaches, we'd like to get them in the spotlight because we feel their value is as much as anybody's in, in college baseball. Thank you all. Hell Appreciate State. It.